Hello, I'm Beth and welcome to my channel. I thought I'd do a introductory video to kind of talk about who I am, what I hope to do with this channel and also answering some of your questions that I posted on my Instagram stories so we can get to know each other a little bit better. So as I already said, I'm Beth and I'm a PhD student at the University of Leeds. I'm studying platelets in the context of cardiovascular disease and platelets are really small cells in the blood that help us to form blood clots during injury so they're hugely important so we don't bleed out. However in cardiovascular disease we have unwanted platelet activation which can lead to heart attacks, stroke, deep vein thrombosis, a variety of things that can be potentially fatal and that's quite a big problem here in the UK and my project is looking at inhibitory signaling pathways within platelets to hopefully understand what goes wrong in the events leading up to cardiovascular disease and if there's a way that we could potentially prevent it or treat it. So that's kind of about my project. So I essentially ask people for blood a lot of the time, which makes me sound a bit like a vampire. I heavily rely on blood donations of awesome people. Um, and fun fact, I am a trained phlebotomist as well, so I can actually take blood which is quite ironic as when I was younger I was so squeamish and my parents thought it was hilarious when I said I was going to be working with blood. But here we are, that's what I do. I'm currently in my third year of my PhD and I roughly have about 15 months left. So it's a bit scary given the whole Covid situation but hopefully we'll be able to do what I hope in that time. We'll see and I'd like to share that journey with you guys as well. In terms of the things that I like outside of my PhD, um, pre-Covid I really liked travelling, going out, having drinks, going out for food, socialising, the cinema, oh my gosh I miss the cinema. But since lockdown I've kind of been exploring different inside hobbies so to speak. Um, uh, some of that has been drawing, um, drawing on the iPad, playing around with, with Procreate, uh, that's been really fun. Also candle making, um, I really like candle making, it's a bit sciencey, quite like it, but it's also therapeutic and fun. And I've also been dabbling in with baking. So yeah, been doing things that are a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it's been fun. Um, and then another thing about me is that I have tinnitus. Um, I do have a couple of videos about that on this channel and I hope to do more. Um, so if you don't know what tinnitus is, it's a constant ringing in the ears. Um, I have it predominantly in my left ear and that means I also have hearing loss as well. Um, so I'm either partially deaf or hard of hearing. I'm fine with any terminology um, with that. Um, so I kind of talk about it in, in the hope that it may potentially help people. Um, obviously I'm not a medically trained doctor in that, in that area, um, but I can only speak from my um, experience, which is something that I want to do. So in terms of the q and I recently got 3,000 followers on Instagram, which is quite exciting. I never thought I would even get like 100 followers, <laughs> let alone 3,000. It's a little bit weird. Um, I know compared to other people, that's not a huge amount, but for me, it's a good milestone and I'm really happy with it. It's been slow progress, but I've enjoyed it and I've met some really incredible people. So to celebrate, I asked people on Instagram to ask me questions so I could Create this video and we can get to know each other a little bit better. So let's dive in. So the first couple of questions um, I'm just going to group together. They are what are your future plans and what do you want to do after your PhD? So I don't really know if I'm being honest. I thought I would know. <laughs> I thought I did know when I started my PhD. I definitely thought I would want to stay in academia and I want would want to do a postdoc and then hopefully one day become a PI, which is a project investigator or principal investigator, which, you know, I still would like to do. But I think since um, putting myself out there online, which sounds weird, in the science community, I have really been interested in science communication, um, science kind of education, uh, medical liaison, all those kind of things. So I'm pretty open-minded. Some of, some part of me, I guess, would really like to try industry as well. I don't know if maybe I'm potentially more suited to that. I, I don't know. I'm very open-minded and I'm not entirely sure. For me, I find science and like medical research really, really interesting. But then I also really love the, like, love communicating science and I feel like that's really important as well. 
So my current plan of action is to just see what's out there close to the time and apply for whatever um, speaks to me, I guess, which sounds a bit weird. But yeah, that's my current plan for the future, if it is one. The next question is, what are you most proud of? Um, I'm proud of a lot of things. Very proud of graduating from my undergraduate degree. Um, it's the first in my family to go to university, so it was kind of a big deal. Um, and I graduated with first, which was amazing. I did not expect that. Um, grades aren't everything, but I was blown away by the fact that I got first. And also getting onto my PhD programme, I was rejected by so many, um, which is something I can definitely talk about. Um, so managing to get onto a PhD programme was, it seemed unachievable for a very long time and then it became achievable and I'm very proud of that. But I guess more recently I am proud of kind of just making it through the past year because it was tough, come on, it was really tough. Um, lots of unknowns, being scary, missing friends and family, being thrown into a very weird time was was challenging um, for me. So I guess I'm very proud of just kind of making it through and I guess coming out on the other end of that. I know obviously we're not back to normal, so to say, so to speak, but um, we're on the road to that, I guess. The roadmap. So, the next one is what's your favourite plant? I really love plants. So funnily enough, we just bought some new plants today. And I think this is my new favourite. Isn't she pretty? Look at that. Um it's called a Calathea. Probably butchering that pronunciation, but look how pretty she is. So that's my current favourite, but I like them all, let's be honest. They're all gorgeous, they're all pretty. Um, and as a plant mother, I shouldn't have favourites. It's wrong. Then I have a couple of people saying, you're amazing, congrats on getting 3,000 followers. Um, and also from Taking On Science, um, which is Laura, if you don't already follow her on Instagram, she's awesome. Um, she just said, not a question, but you're awesome, which I really appreciate, thank you, so you. Um, I met Laura on this science community on Instagram and yeah it's been really cool meeting people and hopefully I can meet them in real life one day um, but like I said if you're not following Laura then you definitely should be she's great and some of the stuff that she posts I feel like I learn something new every day next we have what's your favorite thing about the university that you go to um I guess it's a very pretty campus. It is a very pretty campus. I mean, I don't really spend a lot of time on campus. I spend um, the building I'm kind of close to the hospital. But I mean, I quite like the university. It has a great hall, like Harry Potter. How cool is that? Um, and everyone that I've kind of dealt with is, is super nice. And the people that I work with are absolutely awesome. So I guess the people really the kind of, I guess, sense of community with the people that I work with is really nice. Yeah, so that would be my favourite thing. I don't know whether that's specifically the university or whether it's just a lab group, but it helps. Next is, how did the bloods go? Um, so when I asked these questions on my stories, I also posted about taking blood, and I hadn't taken blood in a long time, and um, it went okay, it went well, yeah. I only missed once, which wasn't great, but hadn't in a long time, and the donut was fine. Uh, so it went well, thanks for asking. Next is, what's your favourite lab equipment? I find this quite tricky. I do a lot of western blotting, which can be a whole other video, because I could probably talk about western blotting until the cows go home. Um, but I don't know if that's my fav they're my favourite piece of equipment. But I kind of really like flow cytometry as well because you get a lot of data from a very small sample which I think is really cool particularly when you're working with blood and for me I have to ask for fresh blood anytime I want to use uh, want to do an experiment so not having to take loads from donors is a absolute benefit because not everybody wants to give up like 
almost a pint of blood away. Some people do, um, but not everybody wants to do it for science. So I'd say flow cytometry. If you don't know what flow cytometry is, it's a really cool method where you can uh, measure physical and chemical properties of cells within a cell population. Um, so you can get a lot of information from that. You can treat your cells with different agonists and inhibitors, and then you can have a look at all the different characteristics within a population of cells. Um, so you can probe with different antibodies for different things on the surface of cells or inside the cells. Really, really cool. And like I said, you get a lot of data. And you can produce some really nice histograms. So yeah, it's good. I like data. The next one is, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I feel okay at the moment. Um, feel pretty good. The weather's much nicer. Spring is on the horizon. The days are longer. Things are improving with PhD. I'm getting more lab time. Yes, it's all aligning and I feel good. The next one is, did you always want to be a scientist? I don't know, I don't think so. I really enjoyed science at school. I had some good teachers, had some bad teachers, but majority were good. And my friends were kind of really into it as well. But I honestly, I enjoyed, like, I enjoyed history, drama and science. They were the subjects that I liked. And I don't really think there's anything that incorporates all of those. <laughs> Maybe there is. But they were my three favourite subjects. And I preferred biology over chemistry, although I did actually quite enjoy chemistry. But I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a scientist. Like, a part of me kind of wanted to be a doctor, but I didn't really get the grades. And also, I was so squeamish. Probably not good <laughs> if you want to go down that route. And I just wasn't really sure. I kind of just took the subjects that I enjoyed when it came to A-level, which was biology, chemistry, and history. But that's they're hard to do together, I will say that. And then when it came to looking at universities, I kind of was a bit was quite open-minded. I initially wanted to do chemistry, but then I went to a university open day where one of the professors was a biochemist and she spoke about all the stuff that she did and the jobs that she did and like the what, the research that she was involved in and I found that very interesting and I thought, yeah, maybe maybe I do want to do that. That sounds awesome. Like medical research, helping people, yeah, and also learning some awesome things, like, yes, please, sign me up for that. So I don't think I always wanted to be a scientist until I was probably late teens. But since I've kind of gone on this path, I'm, I feel like it was the right path for me, although we question it regularly, because who doesn't? <laughs> the next is, what is your first holiday after COVID? <sighs> I don't know, again, I kind of just want to go everywhere. It makes me sound like I can't make a decision and maybe I can't. I really would love to go to Iceland and Japan. But then also city breaks like Copenhagen and Berlin and stuff like that. I'm kind of, yeah, open-minded. It would just be nice to explore somewhere that isn't Leeds city centre, I tell you that. <laughs> anyway, really, I mean, places in the UK as well. I'd love to go back to Edinburgh, I kind of want to go to Liverpool. Um, maybe a trip in London. Yeah, let's go everywhere. So I don't know. I mean, last our last holiday, we went to Budapest and we just kind of didn't look for specific places in mind. We kind of looked at, from our airport and saw what was available. Um, so I think we'll probably just do that, have like a budget in mind and then pick where we want to go. Because I feel like we're both not fussy. So and I say we both, that's me and my partner, Zach. We're not fussy, so we'd have a good time wherever we went. The next one is about tinnitus. So what are your tips for dealing with tough days or weeks with tinnitus? Well, that's tricky. I mean, I can only speak for myself. I, for me, anxiety and stress makes tinnitus seem worse. Whether it is, I'm not actually sure you know, it's your perception, so maybe it is. I would try and recommend managing that however you can. So whether that be meditation or journaling or just doing something that you genuinely find relaxing, but also distracting from your tinnitus. I think sometimes 
meditation doesn't work for people because they seem to focus it focus on the tinnitus a lot i would like to watch my favorite tv program with the subtitles on because yeah need some help there and speaking to people i think like just letting someone know even though they might not understand exactly what it is that you're going through just saying like, i'm having a tough time with my tinnitus today will help because you're you're giving it that release and like kind of acknowledging that you're having a tough time with it that's that's what i do um, i'd probably step like probably step away from caffeine and alcohol that personally makes it worse for me but it might not for you it's just kind of knowing your body and sometimes making a tinnitus diary as well it might not work for everybody but just jotting down the times when it's tough even in like your normal diary or calendar or whatever you can look back on that and kind of see if there's any patterns there like was there anything that you're doing at work that was particularly stressful or like have you just eaten something like really sugary or like did you have loads of coffee that day kind of thing will help and it will kind of help you learn what your triggers are which I think learning your triggers and managing stress and anxiety it is the way to kind of live with tinnitus but yeah I hope that helps lastly we have uh, can Zach come and play xbox which is our friend who lives in our building <laughs> well we just moved into the building that um, he lives in but that's quite entertaining yeah Zach can play xbox socially distanced xbox when it's safe to do so <laughs> so that was the q a i hope you enjoyed that and you learned a little bit about me and Hopefully I can make some more videos that will help you in terms of PhD, undergrad and advice and organisation and all of those kind of things, as well as learning a bit more about tinnitus and sharing what I've learnt and also how I manage tinnitus and generally what it's like to be a PhD student and also someone in their 20s living in a city. Like, I'm not just a scientist, there's more to me than that. So they're, they're the kind of things I would like to share. I hope you enjoyed this and if you do and you want to watch videos like that then please subscribe and if you don't already then follow me on Instagram, Twitter, any of the socials at underscore Bethology. I'd love to connect with you. Thank you.